To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear students. Welcome to today's lesson. Today, I am going to continue the lesson electrochemistry. So, in this, I am going to start a new topic here, electrolysis. Now, in the previous chapters, you all remember, we discussed about electrochemical cells. So, electrochemical cell is where you generate electricity using chemical reactions. So, you are familiar with electrochemical cells where you have the electrolyte solution or the solution usually we used dilute sulfuric acid. And then we had the electrodes and you knew or you know how you should un identify the anode and cathode, the positive and negative electrodes and the half equations, the half cell reactions that take place at the anode and the cathode and the electrochemical reaction taking place in electrochemical cells that lead to the generation of electricity. So that was in the first few chapters. Now this is a topic where we discuss electrolysis. When we say electrolysis, you have a compound, you supply electricity to that and you divide it into more simpler components. Lysis means dividing components into simpler components. So here of course what we are trying to do is we are trying to pass electricity to a solution that can conduct electricity and thereafter we bring about a chemical change. So electricity is used to make a chemical reaction to take place. So that is what we are going to discuss under electrolysis. Now, as an example of electrolysis, you have studied some of these processes in your previous grades also. You are familiar with electrolysis of copper sulfate, electrolysis of acidulated water. Then you have heard about metal plating. So these are some things that are familiar to you. And then there's another example. Now, when you uh, go around, you might have seen Goldsmith burnishing gold or silver jewelry. Now the first example. Electrolysis, you would have seen the goldsmiths burnishing gold or silver jewelry near the jewelry shops in town. You would have seen this happen. Now what is the meaning of burnishing or polishing actually? We normally call it polishing. Normally, you know gold and silver, they are inert metals. What is the meaning of inert metals? Those are metals that do not react. You can remember the activity series. These metals come at the bottom of the activity series. Silver, platinum, gold. So gold is the least reactive metal. So it's normally inert, native metals. They don't react. But... From experience, you all know, when we wear gold jewellery, when we keep on wearing it continuously, every day while we do our daily chores, we have the jewelries on. We have it on ourselves. So then what can happen is the shine can reduce a little bit. It's not that it is undergoing any reaction, but the shine because of accumulation of maybe dust particles, sometimes oil, we, when we have a bath, maybe the chemicals accumulate. So due to that, not a chemical reaction, but that shine will not be enough. So what we do is we on and off, give it to the goldsmith and we get them to polish it. So the dirt, the dust, everything is removed and the gold jewelry shines again. So sometimes you might have seen this process happening. I'm sure you would have observed it. If not, you all can observe it one day. If you do that, the person who is burnishing or polishing the jewelry, you will see will have a battery, a set of batteries, then he will have a solution and into that he will have a thin metal, a gold sheet 
immersed in it if it is gold otherwise a sheet of silver and that will be connected to the battery the other end other terminal will be connected to where you connect the gold jewelry and both these will be dipped inside a solution so that does that sound familiar to you all an electrolytic cell a vessel containing a solution that can conduct electricity then you have two terminals and in one terminal you have the metal that has to be coated silver or gold and in the other one you have the object so something similar to metal plating you would have seen that so that is what a goldsmith does if you have not seen such a person make it a point to observe well the equipment he has when you meet such a person next time you may be able to see a battery supplying electricity so this is what i told you a battery supplying electricity wires then there are wires connected to it and a vessel filled with a certain solution and also he uses a narrow gold foil as one of the electrodes and the piece of jewelry that needs to be polished as the other electrode so those are going to be the electrodes or the terminals what he does with this equipment is the application of gold on the piece of jewelry so this is what we discussed as metal plating before you can remember that you have learned this in your smaller grades metal plating using the above process he deposits gold on various jewelry he lets an electric current to pass through the solution so that is the process that is an example where he deposits gold onto the object say you all give a gold ring so he deposits gold on the gold ring metal plating or gold plating the gold ring that process is done by electrolysis or that process is an application of electrolysis so if you try to understand what electrolysis is this is the important one here you can see this one the chemical changes brought about by passing electricity through a solution or liquid which conduct electricity are called electrolytic processes so how do we do that now you can remember a cell now here of course we will call this as an electrolytic cell electrolytic cell why the process is electrolysis so here the process is going to be electrolysis so the cell is known as an electrolytic cell so we need to have two electrodes we need to have a solution here then we will have conducting wires but here of course the conducting wires are connected to a power supply and here you are going to have the object so this is the difference here it is a solution that conducts electricity electricity then you have an electrode then here we have another electrode this is another electrode then we have the power source power source or power supply batteries have to be used you are supplying electricity and you are making a chemical change to take place so here of course in this example we have an object connected there object is connected and this electrode is going to be a gold foil so what happens there the gold deposits on the object so that is a chemical change and that is made to occur by the power supply electricity by supplying electricity we make the gold to deposit on the object 
So normally, if you have a gold solution and if you have a gold object, if you just dip it into the solution, will it get deposited? Or if you just hold two gold objects near each other or a gold object and a uh, iron ring near each other, can you deposit the gold onto iron? No. Normally that doesn't happen. Spontaneously it won't happen. But here, by supplying electricity through a solution that conducts electricity, we make a chemical change to take place. And that is what is known as electrolysis. And the cell in which electrolysis takes place is known as electrolytic cell. Is that clear to you all? So you have to remember students. The chemical changes brought about by passing electricity through a solution or liquid which conduct electricity are called electrolytic processes. So this is an example of an electrolytic process. Now in this, you have to consider this term. By passing electricity through a solution or liquid which conduct electricity. So here also I have said solution that conducts electricity. Now this is important. So you have to consider these solutions that conducts electricity. So then you should know the solutions that conduct electricity. It can be a liquid or a solution that conducts electricity. So in the next slide, we will discuss an activity that is carried out to identify liquids and solutions that conduct electricity. So I'll move on to the next slide. Activity, find out about the liquids or solutions which conduct electricity. And these are the materials. Now here, if you look at the material students, you can see these are two carbon rods. Now you all know carbon has allotropes. Graphite, diamond are two main allotropes of carbon. And out of those, graphite, because of its atomic lattice structure, it has free electrons in it. Because of that, the graphite is a very good conductor of electricity. So we use graphite as electrodes. And the other advantage, you have to keep this in mind, graphite does not react with most of the other solutions. Now if you put graphite into water, graphite into acid or graphite into a basic solution, the graphite does not react with that particular liquid or solution. So therefore, we call graphite electrodes as inert electrodes. Electrodes that do not react with the solution or liquid that they are placed in. So that is one thing you have to keep in mind. So here we use graphite electrodes. Graphite electrodes. You can also write it as carbon electrodes, carbon rods or graphite rods. But you have to know that when we say carbon rods, it means it is graphite. Because graphite is the form of carbon that conducts electricity. You have to remember that. Then we need batteries or dry cells. We need the connecting wires or conducting wires. I will write it as connecting wires, connecting wires or conducting wires to complete the circuit and to connect the electrodes with the batteries and all that. So it can be usually the copper connecting wires. Then we need a galvanometer. Galvanometer. Now both ammeter and galvanometer can be used to measure current. But you all know the difference. In, a, in the ammeter, the pointer deflects only in one direction. Here if we use a galvanometer, you can also see the deflection in both directions. It is possible because it's a zero center galvanometer. But for this activity, you can either use a galvanometer or an ammeter. Because we are going to observe whether the pointer deflects or not. 
That is the purpose. So we can either use a galvanometer or an ammeter can be used. Then we have these a beaker. We can either use one beaker or we can have about six beakers. We can label them because we are going to use different solutions. So you can have all of them uh, labeled in different beakers and then you can change the graphite electrodes from one solution or liquid to the other. But before doing that, we have to make sure we clean the electrode first. So we can have either beaker or many beakers. Then these are the liquids and solutions. We need coconut oil or we will be using coconut oil. You can use other types of oils also if you like. Then there is kerosene. Again like kerosene we can also try out with petrol, diesel if that is available. But kerosene is the most common fuel that we use in the households or that is available to us. So we use kerosene. Then here we have distilled water. Now distilled water, you all know students, it is pure water. H2O only, pure water, distilled water. Then we need to have salt solution. Salt solution and also we need ethanol. In addition to that, we will also need acidulated water, acidulated water or what we say as acidified water, acidified water. Now how do you get acidified water? You have distilled water. Then to that, if you add a small amount of dilute sulfuric acid, then it is acidified water or acidulated water. Same way, salt solution, you can take the salt and dissolve it in distilled water, you get the salt solution. You need ethanol. So these are the liquids and solutions that we are going to use. Coconut oil, kerosene, distilled water, acidulated water, salt solution and ethanol. And the rest of the materials are given here, shown here. You can see. So what we will be doing is we will have the beaker. Like I said, I'll label the beakers. Take all these solutions almost like equal volumes. You don't have to measure and take. You need to have roughly equal volumes. And you have to make sure that part of the graphite rod is immersed in the liquid. And there is a part of it that is above the liquid and that will be connected to the circuit. So we take the liquids, we label them and then we have the graphite rods connected to the terminals of the batteries. One rod with the positive terminal, the other rod with the negative terminal using the connecting wires and also you need to connect the galvanometer with the batteries and the electrode. Then what we do is, let's say we take coconut oil first. You immerse the two rods into coconut oil. You observe the galvanometer, whether it deflects or not. Then you take out the electrodes. You have to clean it. You can wash it with distilled water and dry it with a tissue. And then you put it into the second solution. Observe the galvanometer. Repeat the procedure with all the solutions. So that is a simple activity. I will discuss the method again in the next slide and then we will do the activity. So the method is this. Now like I said, you can see the diagram here. This is going to be the liquid or solution. We will be taking it one after the other or in different beakers. So it's contained in a beaker. Then here you can see carbon or graphite electrode. Carbon or graphite electrode. Graphite electrode. And here also carbon or graphite 
electrode. Then you have the ammeter here. So like I said, it can be an ammeter or a galvanometer. In this, of course, the ammeter is shown. And here you can see these are the dry cells or batteries. And in that, you can see this is the positive terminal. That side is the negative terminal. So then you, are, you have connected the positive terminal to one carbon rod, the negative terminal to the other carbon rod. So then you immerse it and look at the ammeter. Dip the carbon electrodes in the above liquids or solutions and see whether there is a deflection in the ammeter. So it can be the deflection in the ammeter or the galvanometer. Either one is fine. So if it was the galvanometer, you will have the circle with a capital G in it to indicate the galvanometer. It doesn't matter. Even you can use a light bulb also. If the bulb lights, you know that current is flowing. If there is a deflection in the galvanometer or a deflection in the ammeter, then you know there is electricity flowing through this solution. So that is to identify whether the liquid or the solution conducts electricity. So you can use an ammeter, a galvanometer or even a light bulb. So I will write that as a note here. Here you can say note. Galvanometer or ammeter or a light bulb can be used in the activity. So there are deflection in the ammeter or galvanometer bulb lights. This observation, this indicates that the solution or liquid conducts electricity. You have to remember that. That is one thing you need to remember. Then the other point The carbon graphite electrode electrode is known as an inert electrode because it does not react with the liquid or solution used. You can remember similar to this, we can even use platinum electrode. Platinum electrodes are also inert electrode because they also don't react with the solution or the liquid. So you just need to be familiar with this particular term, inert electrode. You have learned this before. I'm just recalling what you already know. And as graphite electrode, this is an activity that you can do at home also students. 
Now, what are the things you need? You need a beaker. You need a beaker. So, you can use a glass, a clear glass. Then, you can take any of these liquids or solution because most of those are available at home also. Then, you have connecting wires. Then, you have dry cells or batteries at home. Where do you get these? Carbon or graphite electrodes. You can take your pencils. But there, you have to have the pencil sharpened from both ends. Now, if this is the pencil, you sharpen from this end and this end. So, from both ends, the graphite lead will be exposed out. Then that will conduct electricity. So, you can also try this at home with the things that are available at home also. So, to observe, instead of an ammeter, you can use the light bulb like I told you. So, it can be a galvanometer, ammeter or even a light bulb. The same way, it can be carbon graphite electrodes, it can be platinum electrodes, but normally we don't go for platinum because that's very expensive. Whereas, carbon graphite is somewhat cheaper. So, we use the graphite electrodes normally in the laboratory activities. So, at home if you want, you can use pencils. The lead of the pencil is made up of graphite. So, it can conduct electricity. So, I am sure you all can understand this activity, a very simple one. We try to understand whether the given solutions. That is, ethanol, kerosene, coconut oil, salt solution, distilled water and acidified water, whether they conduct electricity or not. So, then we will go to the lab and do this activity now. Okay, students. So, now we will try to understand the solutions that conduct electricity. So, we discuss what electrolysis is by passing electricity, by supplying electricity. If we can bring about a chemical change in a solution or a liquid, then that process is known as electrolysis. So, for this process to happen, the solution or the liquid should conduct electricity. So, that is what we are trying to figure out now. So, I have a set of solutions here. You can see this is coconut oil, then we have kerosene, then there is distilled water, there is acidified water, salt solution and finally ethanol solution. So, we will try to observe the solutions that conduct electricity and the solutions that do not conduct electricity. So, to do that we need an ammeter to observe whether a current is flowing through the solution. Then I have connected the ammeters to carbon or graphite electrode. The carbon graphite is a good electrode and you all know it is an inert electrode. Why do we call it an inert electrode? Because this the carbon graphite does not react with any of the chemical substances that we are going to use here. So, both graphite electrodes which are inert and the electrodes are connected with the dry cells. So, we have two dry cells here. So, this is what I am going to do. First, I will take one solution, then dip the electrodes into it and we have to make sure that the two electrodes do not touch each other inside the solution because if that happens, current can flow through the graphite electrodes. So, we have to keep them apart and then you have to observe the ammeter reading. Thereafter, you need to wash the electrodes dry them and then you put it into the next solution. So, that is how I am going to repeat the procedure with all the solutions. So, first we will take coconut oil and I will put the two electrodes. Now, here you can see ammeter reading is 0. When we dip it in, you have to look at the deflection, whether there is a deflection or not. So, here if I dip the two electrodes, is there a change in the ammeter? There is no change in the ammeter. So, here I have both the electrodes inside, no change in the ammeter. But like I said, if we touch this, you can see there is a deflection. So, that means inside the coconut oil. Now, when I dip it inside the coconut oil, there is no deflection. That means current does not flow through the coconut oil. 
we have to clean it first. Now we will use the second solution or the liquid that is kerosene. So here we have kerosene. Again, I'm going to dip the two electrodes. You have to look at the ammeter. The two electrodes should not touch each other. Look at the ammeter. Do you see a deflection? No, there is no deflection in the ammeter. So here you don't see a deflection. That means there is no electricity passing through kerosene. Now here also if I touch the electrodes you can see the current flow but inside the liquid that is kerosene there is no current flow. That means kerosene does not conduct electricity. So I have cleaned the electrodes then we will use the next solution that is distilled water. So into this also I will be dipping the two electrodes. Electrodes are not touching each other. Can you see a deflection? No, there is no deflection in the ammeter. So that means the distilled water does not conduct electricity. So all three liquids, that is coconut oil, kerosene and distilled water, they do not conduct electricity. So these solutions that do not conduct electricity are known as non-electrolytes. We will do the activity with the other liquids and solutions as well. Now I am going to use acidified water. You are familiar with acidified water. We add a small amount of sulfuric acid to distilled water. Then we will get acidified water. So now I am going to dip the electrodes into acidified water. Here if we dip the electrode, can you all see the deflection there? So here when I don't dip it, there's no reading, but when I dip the electrodes, you can see a deflection. So that means current or electricity is being conducted through acidified water. So acidified water conducts electricity. Then it is known as a electrolyte solution. It is an electrolyte solution. Acidified water conducts electricity. I will have to wash the electrodes. We have to clean the electrodes. So I'll dip them in distilled water. And we will have to dry them. So then I'll use the next solution that is salt solution. So salt solution also we will see what happens. Now when I dip the electrodes here, now the reading is zero. When I dip the electrodes you can see a deflection. So again if I try that you can see the deflection there. So that means salt solution also conducts electricity. We will wash the electrodes again. And then the last solution that is ethanol. Again, if I dip the electrodes into ethanol, do you see any change? Is there a deflection? No. So that means ethanol also does not conduct electricity. So we tried with all these solutions. Out of these, when we used acidified water and salt solution, you were able to see a deflection in the ammeter. So that means salt solution and acidified water conducts electricity. Those solutions are known as electrolyte solutions. Whereas coconut oil, kerosene, distilled water, 
and ethanol, there is no deflection when you dip the electrodes. So that means they don't conduct electricity and they are known as non-electrolyte solutions or liquids. So from these students, you will be able to understand that some solutions conduct electricity and those are the electrolyte solutions and some liquids or solutions do not conduct electricity and those are the non-electrolytes. So for the electrolysis process, we will be using electrolyte solutions. Okay students, so did you all see the deflection of the ammeter clearly? Now you saw the activity, we use different solutions. We use kerosene, coconut oil, ethanol, salt solution, distilled water and acidulated water. Not in the order now I, that I mentioned now, but we used all these solutions. So we used all these solutions in the laboratory. You were able to see the deflection and there was deflection in the ammeter when we used acidified water and salt solution only. Kerosene, coconut oil, distilled water and ethanol did not give any deflection. They did not show any deflection. Only acidified water and salt solution, there was deflection. I am sure you all saw that clearly. So that is our observation. Ammeter or in brackets I will put galvanometer shows a deflection only with salt solution and acidified water. And there is no deflection with kerosene Coconut oil, distilled water, water and ethanol. So that was the observation. There is deflection in the ammeter or galvanometer when we use salt solution and acidified water but we use them separately but with, other, with the other liquids and solutions that is kerosene, coconut oil, distilled water and ethanol there was no deflection. So from that what can you conclude? We can conclude and say that salt solution and acidified water they both conduct electricity and these liquids and solutions that is kerosene, coconut oil, distilled water and ethanol do not conduct electricity. And what is the name given for the solutions and liquids that conduct electricity? We call them electrolytes. And the liquids and solutions that do not conduct electricity, they are known as non-electrolytes. You have to remember that. So the conclusion. Acidified water, water and salt solution conduct electricity. And these are known as known as what is the name electrolytes or electrolyte solution 
electrolyte. You have to remember that term. Then, distilled water, water, coconut oil, kerosene, and ethanol do not conduct electricity. They are known as as they are known as non electrolytes. So, liquids and solutions that conduct electricity, they are known as electrolytes. So, here out of the solutions and liquids that we used, acidified water and salt solution conduct electricity. And the other solutions and liquids. Distilled water, coconut oil, kerosene and ethanol, they do not conduct electricity and they are non-electrolytes. So you have to remember this. Now when we say electrolytes and non-electrolyte students, you all know when there is free ions because there needs to be charges for conduction of electricity. So if there are free ions, they will have charges and due to those free ions, the solution or the liquid will conduct electricity. That means acidified water and salt solution have free ions. Because of that, they conduct electricity. And the other liquids and solutions do don't have mobile ions or free ions, ions that can move around. So because of that, they do not conduct electricity. So as a note, I will write that as well. So here, you can say liquids, liquids and solutions, solutions that contain free ions or you can say mobile ions conduct electricity. So the electrolytes need to have mobile ions or free ions. That is why if you take Distilled water. Distilled water is what? It is water molecules. So here they are a lone pairs of electrons and they are bonded. And in between the molecules there is hydrogen bond, the intermolecular bond. There are no free ions. No free ions. So, because of that, what happens? This does not conduct electricity. Distilled water does not conduct electricity. CT because there are no free ions. But now we saw that acidified water conducts electricity. How do we get acidified water? Acidified water or acidulated water, acidified water or acidulated water. Third, water. Both refer to the same thing. How do you prepare that? You take 
distilled water distilled water water to that you add dilute sulfuric acid what happens when you add sulfuric acid now you all know sulfuric acid is a strong acid so it dissociate completely in aqueous solution so when you mix dilute sulfuric acid to distilled water because sulfuric acid decomposes or dissociates completely now there will be 2h plus ions water also decomposes to form h plus ions and oh minus ions so you will have all these ions there now in distilled water it is a covalent compound there are no free ions because we add sulfuric acid water decomposes or dissociates and gives rise to h plus and oh minus ions so then there are free ions or mobile ions because of that acidified water conducts electricity so here you can say in the presence of of dilute h2so4 water dissociates to h plus n oh minus therefore there are mobile or free ions to conduct electricity so that is why distilled water does not conduct electricity but acidified water conducts electricity so if we quickly go back and have a look at the observations and the conclusion so this was the observation ammeter or the galvanometer like i said if you use a light bulb it will light so ammeter galvanometer shows a deflection only with salt solution and acidified water there is no deflection with the ker with kerosene kerosene coconut oil distilled water and ethanol so from that we came to this conclusion acidified water and salt solution conduct electricity and they are known as electrolytes distilled water coconut oil kerosene and ethanol do not conduct electricity and they are known as non electrolytes so here this is a note that i gave you all liquids and solutions that contain free ions or mobile ions they can conduct electricity so as examples we saw distilled water does not conduct electricity why because there are no free ions it is a covalent compound but as you mix it with acid here you can see when it is acidified water or acidulated water you add sulfuric acid to distilled water because of the dissociation of sulfuric acid water also dissociates to give rise to h plus n oh minus ions then of course there are free ions so in the presence of dilute sulfuric acid water dissociates to h plus n oh minus therefore there are therefore there are mobile or free ions to conduct electricity so that is why acidified water conducts electricity so now that i have introduced electrolytes and non electrolytes solutions or liquids that conduct electricity are electrolytes solutions and liquids that do not conduct electricity are non electrolytes and we saw one example distilled water is a non electrolyte acidified water is an electrolyte in addition to that salt solution is an electrolyte 
then kerosene coconut oil ethanol distilled water they are non electrolyte like that you can think of many other solutions and liquids that are electrolytes and non electrolytes so in the next slide i will discuss some of those so here the liquids or solutions conducting electricity are referred to as electrolytes so this is what i explain to you the liquids or solutions conducting electricity are referred to as electrolytes some examples for electrolytes are given below so there are different types of compounds in the form of liquids and solutions that can conduct electricity so we will look at some examples the first one aqueous solutions of ionic compounds now you are familiar with ionic bonds can you think of some ionic compounds sodium chloride copper sulfate Sodium chloride is an ionic compound. Copper sulfate is an ionic compound. Usually, the salts are ionic compound. And when you dissolve them in solution, they are free ions. So because of that, they conduct electricity. So aqueous solutions of ionic compounds. Aqueous sodium chloride. sodium chloride then aqueous copper sulfate copper sulfate these are aqueous solutions of ionic compounds aqueous sodium chloride aqueous copper sulfate like this you can think of many other salt solutions even aqueous magnesium chloride that is also a salt then the second type we have molten or fused liquids of ionic compounds the same ionic compound now if you take sodium chloride the solid does not conduct electricity we saw that aqueous solution that is when sodium chloride is dissolved in water it conducts electricity similarly molten or fused liquids of ionic compounds if you take the sodium chloride salt you heat it to a very high temperature then it will melt and form the sodium chloride liquid the sodium chloride liquid is what we call as molten or fused sodium chloride so molten or fused sodium chloride also conducts electricity so here as an example we can say fused sodium chloride then we have solutions of acids you are familiar with acids hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid so usually dilute sulfuric acid dilute hydrochloric acid then what do we have here solutions of bases solutions of bases now sodium hydroxide is a base lime water calcium hydroxide is a base so these are all basic solutions that can conduct electricity so sodium hydroxide solution sodium hydroxide solution then there is lime water lime water is calcium hydroxide solution so that is lime water now like that we have lime juice lime juice you all know is acetic acid it contains acetic acid that is a weak acid that also can conduct electricity so here dilute sulfuric acid dilute hydrochloric acid even lime juice 
Now here you have to remember students, lime juice is an acid. It contains citric acid, acetic acid, those are there. Whereas lime water is base, calcium hydroxide. Now all these conduct electricity. Then there are solutions and liquids that do not conduct electricity. The liquids or solutions that are not conducting electricity are known as non-electrolytes. So here you can see the liquids, solutions that are not conducting electricity are non-electrolytes. And some examples for non-electrolytes here we can take the examples distilled water, distilled water, then there is kerosene, then coconut oil, ethanol, all these are non-electrolytes. Is that clear student? So electrolytes and non-electrolytes. Now here you can see the liquid solutions conducting electricity are referred to as electrolytes. So under that aqueous solutions of ionic compounds, aqueous sodium chloride, aqueous copper sulfate. Then there is small turn of fused liquids of ionic compounds, fused sodium chloride. Even you can say fused calcium chloride. Then solutions of acids, dilute sulfuric acid, dilute hydrochloric acid, even lime juice that contains citric acid that also can be used. Then solutions of bases, sodium hydroxide solution and lime water. Then liquids or solutions that are not conducting electricity are non-electrolytes. Examples distilled water, kerosene, coconut oil and ethanol. So now you all know the reason why some components are electrolytes and some components are non-electrolytes. So what is the reason there? As a note, now this is something you know students, you all know this very well, but I'm writing it again just for you all to recall. So note, solutions, or liquids with mobile charges or you can say ions conduct electricity. That is okay now students. Solutions or liquids with mobile chargers or ions conduct electricity. So if they don't have mobile chargers or ions, they don't conduct electricity. Now all the examples. If you can remember, we said sodium chloride solution. This decomposes to give or dissociates as Sodium plus aqueous and chloride aqueous. So that is a an aqueous solution of ionic compound. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound. Aqueous solution dissociates to give free ions. Sodium ion and chloride ion. So it conducts electricity. Then the fused sodium chloride or liquid sodium chloride, NaCl liquid that also contains Na plus liquid and Cl minus liquid. Here you should note the difference students. If it is an aqueous solution, ions are also in the aqueous state. But if it is a liquid, the ions are also in the liquid state. Although the compound is the same. This is aqueous sodium chloride. This is fused sodium chloride. Both are the same ionic compound. So aqueous ionic compound or the molten of fused ionic compound. Then we have the acids. Acids H2SO4, 
aqueous dissociates to form 2H plus aqueous and SO4 2 minus aqueous. Same goes for bases. NaOH aqueous. Aqueous solution of bases. So Na plus aqueous and OH minus aqueous. So this is how you re relate what you have learned before with this lesson. So in all these solution of ionic compounds, molten of used ionic compounds, acids, bases, they all dissociate to give rise to free ions or mobile ions. So because of that, they all conduct electricity and they are all electrolyte solutions or electrolytes. Whereas the other compounds like kerosene, ethanol, pure water or distilled water, they cannot dissociate and give rise to mobile ions. Because of that, they don't conduct electricity. I'm sure you all can understand that. I'll be discussing this in the slides after also under extra knowledge. So I will move on to the next slide. For your memory file. So what I explained to you all, the solid ionic crystals formed by the oppositely charged ions do not contain mobile ions. So this is something solid ionic crystals formed by oppositely charged ions do not contain mobile ions. Now this is something I didn't discuss in the previous slide. Now if you take sodium chloride solid, this is an ionic compound. Now ionic compounds you know exist as ionic lattices. What are ionic lattices? A three-dimensional array of point charges that is Na plus and Cl minus. Now you can remember the arrangement students. Now this is how you will have Na plus around that you will have Cl minus like this. There are going to be sodium ions and chloride ions arranged in a three-dimensional array. That is the ionic lattice. In this, the ions cannot move. So here, ions cannot move. So that means there are no free ions or mobile ions. Because of that, they do not conduct electricity. So you can remember that. Ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in their solid state, but they conduct electricity in the few state and the solution state. You all can remember that. You have learned all this before. So again, if I go back, here you can see the solid ionic crystals formed by the oppositely charged ions do not contain mobile ions. So what were the oppositely charged ions? Sodium ion and chloride ion. Sodium plus chloride minus. Therefore, they cannot conduct electricity. But when they are dissolved in water or fused, that is heated till the solid melts, its ions become mobile. For this reason, aqueous solutions or molten liquids of ionic compounds conduct electricity. So here, aqueous solutions or molten liquids of ionic compounds conduct electricity. Then you can see the hydrocarbons such as petrol, kerosene and paraffin. You are familiar with the term hydrocarbon, hydro, hydrogen, carbon. So compounds that are made up of carbon and hydrogen. We have discussed this under organic compounds. So hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons like petrol, kerosene and paraffin are compounds with covalent bonds. You all know what covalent bonds are? Sharing of electrons. Bonds formed by sharing of electrons. 
So the hydrocarbons such as petrol, kerosene and paraffin are compounds with covalent compounds. So they do not conduct electricity because there are no mobile or free ions. Pure water is also covalent and there are almost no ions. You have to remember that. Pure water is also covalent and there are almost no ions. Therefore, pure water does not conduct electricity. In aqueous solution, the covalent bonds in acids such as hydroiodic acid that is HI, hydrochloric acid HCl and sulfuric acid H2SO4 break to form ions. That is what we call as dissociation. Therefore, the solutions of acids such as these conduct electricity. So HCl with water, you get H plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. H2SO4 with water, you get 2H plus aqueous and SO4 2 minus aqueous. So this is also something you have to remember students. In aqueous solution, the covalent bonds in acids such as hydroiodic acid, hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid break to form ions. Is that clear? So this is again what I explained in the previous slide related to that. They have summarized and it has to be for your memory file. So you have to remember this because we have discussed these in previous chapters, previous lessons in your previous grades also. So you have to recall that and you have to remember that. So here I showed you all this. Ionic compound sodium chloride in the solid state. It is in the form of ionic lattice. So ions cannot move. They are fixed point charges. So because of that it does not conduct electricity. But like I showed you all in the previous slide. I will quickly go back there. Here you can see the previous slide I showed you all, all the dissociation. Ionic compound in the aqueous form, ionic compound in the fused or liquid form, they have free or mobile ions. Same goes for acids and bases. So that is why they conduct electricity. But like mentioned here, the covalent compounds like distilled water, petrol, diesel, kerosene, coconut oil, any other type of oil, ginger oil, olive oil, all of them, they are covalent compounds. They do not have free ions or mobile ions. Because of that, they do not conduct electricity. So that is something you have to remember, student. It is for your memory. So you have to remember. And also, since you are familiar with all these equations, if fast, you should be able to write those as well. I'm sure you all can understand all that, student. So with that, student, I'm going to end this chapter. And in the next chapter, we will try to understand what electrolytic process is. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.